I'm here with Dr. Romano to do problems on function notation. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Dat Destroyer book. I am here today with my professor who has actually teach taught me all that I know about math, Professor Blois, and he's gonna go over function notation, which is a sure bet type of question to land on the dat. So, Professor, if you can give us some good pointers on function notation. Okay, Professor Blois here with function notation. And before we get to the subject, I want to give you a little preamble on the difference between x and y in these two expressions. Here we have the expression uh, x squared equals 9, okay, whose solution is x is equal to negative 3 and positive 3. Both are solutions to that equation. Negative 3 squared is 9, positive 3 squared is 9. Now let's look at this expression. y equals the square root of 9. What is the value of that? It's equal to 3. Positive 3 and only positive 3. The square root of a, a number, of a positive number, is defined as, the po as a positive value. So we only take the positive square root when we just have uh, the square root, okay? That may not seem relevant to what we're about to do, but you'll see that it is relevant. Let's read this first problem in function notation. If g of f of x equals x to the third plus 10, and g of x equals x plus 10, find f of 5. All right, well, let's start out with this definition of g of x. How do we operate with function notation? Here's the way I like to teach function notation. You have a, a, a function that's defined in terms of x. Let's turn off the x. Whenever we turn off the x on the left, we're gonna turn off the x on the right. Whatever we replace the dot with, whatever we, we replace x with on the left, we're gonna replace x with on the right. Okay, so what if we have, what, let's look at this expression here. Let's replace the dot with f of x. Okay, and what do we replace the dot with on the right side? Well, we see that's equal to x cubed plus 10. Well, what does this lead to us to conclude? f of x is equal to x to the third power. Okay, so we know that as a result of this, f of x is equal to x to the third power. The problem asks us to find f of 5. All right, very easy. On the left, we replace x with 5. On the right, we replace x with 5. 5 to the third power is 125. There's our answer. Okay, let's look at this next problem in function notation. If f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 44, and h of x equals x minus 8, evaluate f of h of minus 2. So the way we deal with function notation, we start with the innermost expression. Let's find the value of h of minus 2. And for that, we're going to go to the function defined by h. h of minus 2, we replace x with minus 2 on the left, x with minus 2 on the right, and we see that h of minus 2 is minus 10. So therefore, uh, f of h of minus 2 is equal to f of h of minus 2 is equal to f of minus 10. Okay, well we know what the definition of f of x is, the square root of x squared plus 44, so that's going to be the square root of negative 10 squared plus 44. Negative 10 squared is 100, so this is going to be equal to the square root of 100 plus 44, which is the square root of 144. And as we saw in our preamble here, the square root of 144 is 12 and only 12. And that's the value of our expression, f of h of negative 2, which is equal to f of negative 10. That's equal to 12. Okay, final example in function notation. For which values of x is the function g of x undefined? Well, let's take a look at uh, g of x. g of x is equal to quantity. It's, it's a fraction in the numerator. x squared plus 10 times x minus 5. In the denominator, x squared minus 25, x cubed minus 8. Okay, how do we deal with this rational function? Well, I know that uh, the function is undefined wherever I have 0 in the denominator. So I look at this expression and I can see that the denominator can be factored. 
Let's take a look at that. The denominator can be factored. x squared minus 25 is the difference of two squares. x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then we have x to the third minus 8, which we need not factor, but we want to identify the places where the denominator is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so the denominator, this expression, x plus 5 times x minus 5 times x cubed minus 8, we set it equal to 0. Those are, the, those are going to be the forbidden values. We can see that the value... The values of x that make this 0 is equal to negative 5, positive 5, and by observation, x cubed minus 8, when x is equal to 2, it's going to make that expression uh, uh, 0, which means we cannot have 0 in the denominator, and these are the values for which g of x is undefined. Just one more comment. Notice that the 2x minus 5s can be canceled, but even if they can be canceled, that still disqualifies 5 from being a valid input value to this function. We cannot have 0 over 0. If we were taking the limit, it would be different, but we're not doing that in this case. Those are the three undefined values. Now that's function notation. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. That was a smoking problem as usual. Okay, thanks. Okay, if you guys have any questions or want to talk to Dr. Blois, um, you could see us on Facebook. Okay, good day to you. Bye-bye.